like to show you a little bit about uh, linear graphs now. I think uh, this is something very, very important, especially uh, when doing all sorts of math here. Uh, this is going to allow us to work with equations that give us straight lines. So the word linear actually means straight line. So in other words, if it's a linear graph, I mean a straight line graph here, okay? or straight line graphs. So maybe it's a good idea to start off with uh, the general equation of a straight line. So maybe I'll write that down. So the general equation of a linear function, or actually I should just say linear equation. And it goes like this, y equals m x plus b. Well, depending on where you're from, maybe uh, you've learned it as m x plus c. It doesn't really matter. As long as you understand that there's a y going on, there's an x, and then there's two numbers. There's a number m that's kind of glued up against the x, and there's a number sitting on its own. This number can be zero, m could be zero, maybe both are zero, then it's a pretty boring equation. But in any case, this is the general equation of a straight line graph. This is very, very important. Maybe I'll put stars by it here, okay? Really, really important here. Now let's talk about what these different things mean. M, for example, is known as the slope, although sometimes it's called the gradient. Yeah, it all means the same thing. Uh, some people write the slope and the gradient as delta y over delta x. That's because delta means change. So it's like saying a change in y divided by a change in x. Some people like to write it more specifically. Whoops, in other words, uh, let me just undo what I just did here. In other words, it's going to be y with a little subscript 2. In other words, the second y minus the first y divided by second x divided by first x. See, that means a change. Um, some people even like this way right here with a little shortcut, so to speak. People call it rise over run. I'll explain all these in just a second. I just want to explain at least that m means all these things. Yeah, I like to think of it as it's how steep the slope is. And B is your y-intercept. What that means here, that means when it crosses the y-axis. In other words, when x is 0, y equals the y-intercept in this case. Okay, so that means when we're at x equals 0, that's really what we're looking at here. So maybe I should give you an example. Maybe this will make more sense. So I'm going to give you an example of an equation, and then I'm going to show you what the graph looks like. Now, of course, you can go backwards and forwards. I could show you a graph, and you can get the equation from it. But in this case, I think I'll just do an equation first. So I'll do a nice, easy, straight line graph equation. Maybe I'll do um, maybe something with a negative slope, just to change things up a little bit here. So I'll make it uh, y equals minus 2x plus 3. Now what this means, I want to graph this. If you notice, I put a little graph paper on my background here just to make it a little bit easier to show you graphs. So if I want to graph this, it's important first of all to look at how it looks. Now I might have, I might have given you this equation. It could have been in a really weird form. Maybe it could have been like this, for example. And it turns out I could have graphed this as well, but first step would have been to rewrite it in this form. Turns out if you want to just take your time, get y by itself here, use an algebra, you'd have to move this 2x over, you'd have this equation here. In other words, I hope I didn't confuse you there, but the idea was just that it doesn't matter how the equation looks, you want it to become in the form y equals stuff. You want the y on its own on one side, and all the rest of the stuff over here on the other side. And remember, the thing glued in front of the x, that's m. So in this case, I'm going to say then that m equals negative 2. In other words, that's my slope, or my gradient. And my b value, in other words, is 3. Now, instead of writing m is negative 2 and b is 3, I'd rather actually say that the gradient, right, that's a slope. So the slope is negative 2. I prefer this notation, and I prefer to say that the y-intercept, I usually say y-int, short for y-intercept, is 3. I think these two facts are the important ones. Okay, that the gradient is negative 2, and the y-intercept is positive 3. That means if I want to graph this one here, if I want to graph this bad boy, what do I do? I need some straight lines. Maybe I'll graph some here. 
And I need to have something here where I can see uh, hopefully far enough here. So I'll just try to draw a couple straight lines here. We'll see if I have enough room to do it. So what I'm going to need, of course, to do this is a couple of numbers up and down, so to speak. So maybe I'll just label my axes here. It's important to label what's going on. That's X. That's Y. Maybe I'll label the values too. I mean, I need to label my little tick marks so that someone's looking at my graph can know what numbers actually mean what. You don't always have to graph everything, but it's a good idea to graph a few of them like this. All right. Now remember what happens then, the uh, x's go, as you go to the right in the x direction, you're adding, and as you go to the left, you, you know, they're negative values, and over here, as you go up in y values, they're positive, and as you go down in y values, they're negative. Maybe to make this clear, I'll just move my little y here, just to make sure you don't think it's y3, it's y, and then it goes 1, 2, 3, and so on. So I know that my y-intercept is 3. So I always start off by graphing this. I can draw a y-intercept of 3. Remember, I told you that that's when x equals 0. That tells you what y is. So that means when my x value here is 0, in other words, right here, that's 0, then I know what my y value is. My y value is 3. So I can actually draw this as a point right here. There's one point here. Now, what does a gradient mean? There's a lot of ways of looking at this. My favorite way to just think, well, always walk to the right and then think, are you going up or down? So I always think of it as if I walk to the right and if I go up, that means it's a positive gradient. In other words, it's like if you're walking, you're going up a hill. But if a gradient is negative, you're going down a hill. In other words, I'm expecting to go down somehow. The problem is, how much do I go down? The general definition of a gradient really means for every one unit I go to the right, I go up or down by the gradient. In other words, from this point, I walk one to the right, that's just a definition. I always go one to the right, and then I look at gradient of negative two means says go, it means that I should go down two. In other words, this will be it. Okay, that's a way to look at it. So again, my y-intercept is three, so I start off by drawing that dot right here at three, and then a gradient of negative two means for every one unit I go to the right, I go down two. Then all I have to do is connect these two with a straight line, and I'm done. Maybe I'll try to do that here. So maybe I'll make it a little bit longer here. Um, sometimes I like to actually just think every one, I go down two. That means I can go one here, down two more, just to show you what the graph will look like. It should look something like this. Now, does this graph ever stop? No, it goes on forever in both directions. Okay, so that means this graph goes all the way down here. It goes all the way up here. It's just a matter of how far do you feel like making it go? Okay, so you can see straight line graphs in this way. I think they're actually quite useful here. Okay, so again, remember though, that if M is positive, it's like you're going uphill. Okay, maybe I'll actually write that down here. That's pretty important. So if, maybe I'll put that at the bottom here. If M is, uh, is positive, uh, that means um, we could say that the it's like you have to go uphill, I suppose you could say. So it goes uphill as you move one to the right. And keep in mind, I mean, conversely, we can also say that if M is negative, obviously it goes downhill. Oops. Goes downhill. As you move one to the right, of course. One to the right. All right, so that's a little bit about straight line graphs. Keep in mind, though, I could just show a graph and I could get the equation from it by working backwards. I could look at the graph. Let's say I was just given this graph right here and I could figure out what the equation is. I would first start off by saying, what's the y-intercept? That's three. So I know I have to have a something, something, something plus three. And then I just gotta work out what the slope is or the gradient by going you know, over one and then down or up or whatever. Okay, so that's the general idea behind doing a straight line graph. Okay, so that's how we can graph something like this.